in the 1v3. Sorry, so it looks like we're getting things... Looks like we're getting things resolved, and we are now on your screens and in your ears. So that's a good start. As this pistol is just winding on down, Nikodos is thrust into a clutch, and he's having a good oh. shot into the head of Zipex. There's surely no more. Time continues to tick. No kit here. Yeah, that's going to be an issue. He has already sussed out their location. They're dropping smoke to make things awkward, and he's continuing to hit shots. Glaive can surely play the clock. No kit present. He's found it. He has found the kit. And that smoke. Does have a side by Glaive. Good challenge. He's such a threat. Nikodos looking to close the round. He's been toyed with by Glaive. That should be the end of that. And so, a hard fought pistol, no less. And Nikodos looking to finish with Pazaz. Can't quite pull it across the line. And Glaive, quite the easy debut back in the Astralis chest. Yeah, right there. Probably would have enjoyed the armor and that kick going forward. But got hungry for the kills right there. And that's the details that I think we're going to be seeing the difference of as we move uh, to these higher pressure scenarios. Online, you know, you're in your own bedroom. Maybe you're in that boot camp environment. You're going to make the right decision more often than not. Here on land, it's all coming down to those little details, but they do get a decent looking force by out here, Copenhagen Flames. Couple Deagles, couple CZ75s, and a Famous in the hands of Nikodos here. Make sure you keep note of those smokes. Charles. And they're rocking. Pretty standard default spread here. Two towards the back. Speculative shots through the smoke. Let's just sit back, wait, see if the CTs want to go for any aggressive maneuvers. Oh, Roy. A lot of information on that, but actually his demise baited in nicely. Nikodos converts. His rifle now loose, and he's going for an Aggie one, pushing straight up for that info. He'll be able to lock the door on any funny business, rotating back through this playground. Once he confirms it's clear, which it looks like, he will be able to confirm it. And now he's locked them in. Oh, spotted out. Holding the back line, but a well-tamed spray. And now into T-Spawn. Nikodos with high impact back-to-back -back rounds here. He's actually in pursuit of the AK. He could make life very difficult. Oh, oh no! The knife out. That's the end of him and all that pressure. Release. Okay, well, Debris got the AK. Plenty of time for this still. 45 seconds remaining. 3v3. And kick going forward and, well, back towards the B bomb site. So leaving that pressure looks like it enough. Glaive's going to smoke off towards heaven. They just have to deal with Yabby now. And his Deagle shots have been noted. They're going to commit to the site here. There's still time if they want to head back up connected towards this A bomb site. Oh, he's going to be caught out here. Glaive, ready for it. Oh, Hooksy, quick to react and does tuck in. So now, with 20 seconds left, it's getting really awkward for the still boys the of Astralis. Yeah. They're in the right place. On the present. Deagles as well. Going to not be aiming for those body shots anymore. It has to be some spicy headshots out of these young gamers. And well, nine, eight. It starts to look good for the flame. Lucky does bail them out of trouble. The headshots aren't there. And just getting that bomb down. 1v3, surely no. Oh, but he has brought him very low. Lucky down to a scrap of health. The high angle from Dupree, not expected. Okay, well, it hasn't been a uh, particularly frictionless first two rounds. No, one-on-one -on -one to close out that uh, pistol round, and now one-on-two situation. I think right there, very, very good to see Lucky hitting impact shots like that. All right, that's three kills for him now, but to hit shots when we're down to those final 10, 15 seconds, the pressure's on. Good stuff here. That's one of the question marks around Astralis. How is Lucky going to perform with these four absolute legends around them? We'll have to be an eco now coming out from the flames here. There's going to be a couple of HEs invested in three in total, a P250. This should be Astralis wrapping up the 3-0. Comes the nades. And they've seen enough. Defensive molly. They're back on off. This one should be bumped up quite quickly here. Yeah, plus one thumbs to Siphon though for the hard commit. No, like he's not, Someone's gonna do he's it. not scared of that Someone's Molotov. He's it. having none of that. And of course, you leave the Mac 10 just to corral and perhaps even farm up a little bit of extra juice. Magisk has been given the gift of that with his extra health. And around the world, they will maneuver. Yeah, I, I, I thought, watch, looking at the video, I was like, okay, so Ancient and Overpass as, as the final two maps here. Ancient wouldn't be a bad place to take it. Overpass is a map with Astralis in the last three months. They only have a 33%. Uh, win on it, and you're sitting there thinking, okay, this isn't too bad where Copenhagen Flames have gotten the veto to, but it all starts now, right? That nine in a row map streak that they've been able to accrue hasn't been against the best teams in the world. 
and Australia still fall into that category regardless of their woes they've been having of recent times. Yeah, I mean, I was singing their praises of the fact that they can just keep bloody changing a player, make it two, removing the one of the star orpers of the entire scene, and still functioning at a high top 10 team level. We've got both big greens out here, Nikdos and Lucky, with their primary He's weapons equipped on this. straight for the party peak, or perhaps just a posture. He'll throw the nade, he'll throw the smoke, and that's Catch. a good one. Straight onto the noggin of Lucky. Good start, and that will slow them down. That will humble them. The potential for long aggression, party, it is all a concern. Speaking of aggression, I don't know if Dupree's considering anything further. He's just staring at that short smoke for now. That's the pit here. Looks like we're going to collapse down onto the sewer position from Connector and the short push. Real oh, aggressive. Oh my goodness, yeah, they found the first. Not quite the second. Yabby with the trade does seize the advantage. And just like that, yeah, they're very scattered. Lucky was playground magic still in that underpass, looking to claw back that control. And they've already evaporated. They're gone. Tucked into the site. And a man advantage. Looking great for the first gun round here. Back to B. Nades towards this monster position. Hooksy picking off the back. No info spotted so far. It's up through the sandbag position for Magus here. And 42 seconds remaining. Still plenty of time. Nice nade. Flash as well, but the follow through is not there. Zip goes down. Hooksy looking good for a second. It's just one man remaining. Lucky with that AWP. Running outside monster. Takes a shot. And I don't know what happened, guys. I've. Uh, I can't see the I've screen. lost video, so. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> We're operating here. Whew. The best we can right now. <sighs> Lucky would do very well to save right here. And it looks like he's going to get away with it. Tacking on back towards T spawn. And um, yeah, I, look, I'll let you, you sort that I'll out. I'll sort that out. You yeah. take over the car. <laughs> Let's get this one started. That's a lovely gun round, though. It really is. And that's exactly what they wanted to do, especially after the couple of oopsies in their initial conversions. And it looks like we've got a mini-map. That is going to make things I increasingly clear. Nikodos, actually, the AWPA, despite his impact on the pistol and the force with the FAMAS. So going to get us to see him on his primary weapon once again. Lucky is well equipped. And so the adventure begins for Roy. Like to see, he's got a very supported cast here, so quite an aggressive smoke. Ooksy responsible for Magisk's advance. He will be threatened from behind as well. Ooksy should have a shot here. Good one. Magisk has got him out. Good advantage now. Even with the Galil, he will take that head. And no trade. Nikodos, are you really going to commit? Throw your body into the depths of the underpass? It would put him into jeopardy. Siphon has held his nerve. That was a three-man push on short. And they do all collapse at the hands of the Flames. Just two now. And looking set to break. Astralis setting them back to just peanuts. Now the only way they get back into this round is a slip up. Lucky's hoping for it, staring at it. Magis trying to take a gap and it's unlikely there will be one with such a big man advantage. Roy though is being walked on here. He didn't fully take it clear and down goes Roy. Problems. Nikodos is called upon. Lucky's on his way as well. They will be able to get some util down. What do you reckon? The bomb could be going down here, Chad. Yeah, plan to be nice considering the situation right now. That just is the point man here. He's just scooped up another molly as well. They've got a perfect util set. Bank yeah, up is locked. Down. Bomb is down. A 2v4 suddenly feeling threatened. Maybe not anymore. Yabby, that's shot. a great shot. Catches his second. He is already Combi's responsible. Low, yeah. yeah, and exactly. Lucky, he has the perfect situation for a one versus three here. The new addition. 18 years of age and representing the best team in his country. He'll give it a go. Misses the chance and Nikodos does not let those slip. Seven kills right now for Nikodos. This is really good, right? You take a little bit of a look at the stats here for Copenhagen Flames. You've got Roy top of uh, the charts here for overpass and then Nikodos coming in in second place for the team as far as rating goes. And that's very important, right? I think having your AWPA as one of your highest rated players on a map like overpass, especially on that CT side, is going to be integral here. But making something... Not out of nothing. Astralis keep it somewhat competitive. That's going to facilitate a bit of a half by scenario here. So you can see Magisk investing into the Galil. There's some pistols scattered across. 
financial management, right? When teams know how to be threatening, know what type of buyers they can get away with the lost bonus time and time again. We've got that right on down. Oh, oh, and his spray's completely off the mark. Magis will break through. Issues now for the Barrels player. It's Yabby. And he's already lined up the first. He knows there's multiple targets closing in on him here. The juggled rifles nicely. That's the bomb now down. Roy's contributed a lot, and that might take the wind out of the sails here of Astralis. Magis so low. Zipex, no armor behind the Galil, but they've managed to make a real round out of this Astralis. Two rifles. Right. Oh, hello. Good to see Yabby's feeling comfortable in the LAN environment. Yeah, crispy shot so far out of him. This one looks like it'll be cleaned up here. Zip's going to have something mental there. And without armor, you just see his head explode like a bit of a watermelon. And here he is again. Lucky. Just a P250 this time round. Isn't it nice, though, to see an early commit on one of those light buys? Sometimes like, we see the, the full two minutes milked for everything it's worth. That was... Uh, thank you, Glaive. Thank you. I I'm curious to see what the pace is going to be as well for those who maybe missed a lot of the online era. Uh, we did have teams for the longest period of time playing very, very slow CS, right? Because they want to make sure that all that utility is expended on those eco rounds. They want to make sure every single penny is spent. But the gear changes on land, especially when you make it to an arena. There's the ambient noise going around. Like, you can use the crowd to your advantage. Carrigan's a bit of a master of that. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see. But we're back into the guns, and I'm just back into a Galil here. So having to forego the AK for utility this time around. Bit of a default spread again. So through the connector, three working a bit towards playground, and just that one man, Zipex. He's been doing it for years. Probably be doing it for a couple years more. Just have to push back this early threat. Nikodos has now been forced back towards Barmer. Over right here, no oh. man's land, and Glaive will chop off his head. That's a great opener. Yeah, completely caught in transition. I just don't think, with Nikodos finding nothing on his initial peak, suspected it was a little more clear than it was. Now, Runboos, Nikodos is pre aiming for that wide swing and just averts his gaze. They'll close gap. He will surely perk up his ears and hear some advance. They hit their walk keys, but. Ready to clear. Oh, and now Dupree surely going to catch a timing here. Multiple targets. The threat's too much. His back is turned and only the one for him. Still Humbled one, now. Though. Does manage to catch Lucky. It is something. The man advantage comfortably in Astralis is caught. And with 50 seconds, they're in absolutely oh. no rush. That's a big one from Dupree. Hooksy on a jiggle and slapped, punished for it. Well, there's those uh, secondary orping duties showing off, right? When the team was in limbo, who was going to orb? Dupree. And a little bit right there and a lovely shot for him. Now it's about playing out these numbers. Siphon over towards that B bomb site. Abby perched towards A and actually pulling Siphon on over. So the gamble stacking this A bomb site. Dupree's walked on in. It's an open door. Yabby's not looking. Siphon, I don't think he's going to be expecting him already passed, and he isn't. Dupree. Oh, okay. That's the round. Beautiful stuff there, Astralis. We'll get their fourth off the back of a Dupree 4K. Yeah, nice. beautiful stuff. And, and, doing, and doing it with a variety of different weapons as well. Now, if we take a quick look at the finances left-hand side of your screen here for Copenhagen Flames, if they were able to save those rifles, right, that gamble stack, if they go B, that's fine. We'll save those guns. We'll get ourselves out with a pretty full buy in the next round to play. Well, you can see how ugly it looks here. Two rifles, not too shabby, but the pistols alongside and the lack of utility, no defuse kit either. Things are not going to be easy right now for Copenhagen Flames. If they lose this one, Astralis will be able to get themselves up to six rounds easy as you like. Not riding on this, Roy. Equipped with one of the biggest guns, and he did just have a bit of an awkward one. Falling down in the round seven. Doesn't seem to have uh, pushed him away from the aggressive maneuver. And it's going to be given an AK early here. Certainly a possibility. I imagine Lucky's very, very well restrained. Has his limits. Lingering in an off angle for any aggressive long maneuvers. And Stralis just biding their time trying to catch any of this early CT and man uh, aggression. Well, and, here here it, and here it comes. Patience about to be rewarded. How deep is your clear? It's decent. And now an AK falls into enemy hands if they want to. That's going to force them towards B though, surely. Or maybe not. This is a gap. This is a huge gap right now for Magis. Wow, He's been able to pip this. Yeah, but Roy's getting info. And surely that will get his uh, feckles up. He knows something's afoot, something fishy. Down goes Hooksy elsewhere, but now he's got the strike. Roy, big impact now. And what do Astralis do? Surely you'd It has to be B. They have to go B. The, you can't really go towards A. Even though Magis had that gap, he did damage onto Yabby on the site. They know he's in no man's land right now. They have to go towards this B site, and Roy's still pushing. Still a smoke on him. If he could get back to B. Could rot the clock. Looks like Dupree's not going to have any of that. Magis has been caught. Hey, Roy again. Again by Roy. He said he wanted a... High impact round, we're just get more oh. high impact than that. And a great dig out of Nikodos for good measure. A crucial round for the boys. And 
Copenhagen Flame surely have this one unlocked. It's 2 HP, Zip, he is the clutch minister. I feel like this is just a little too much to ask of the man. And Roy with four. Responds to Dupree's quad kill with one of his own and puts the fourth round on the board for the Flames. Yeah, beautiful stuff there. Just really jarring. Like, it looked for a moment that Astralis had a bit of a timing there, but as soon as that pressure was through, Roy continuing to force the issue towards T-Spawn. He just put Astralis in a rough spot. Now, they get a plant again, and they can continue here to be threatening. So, neither team broken, right? Both willing to contest. And that's good to see the fight, right? Some teams, they might come in, they might play too conservative. They won't take the risks with the rifles and the pistols, but... A risk taken and flames convert, keeping us level here. A timeout called and the first for Astralis. Taking a look at the scores, Dupree up to 11 kills. We've got six for Glaive, five for Lucky, four for Magisk, and well, Zippy's got two, but anchoring that B-bomb side all the time. What's going to be the response here? They definitely can afford. They won't have the AWP out for Lucky by any means. So maybe something a little bit quicker, right? If you have a set piece right now, something that you, you want to take some space. Oh, is that back-to-back -back timeouts or is that a response? Uh, Counting, that was, is, it was it T timeout first? Yeah, so I've, I've been digging through the rule book. Yeah. And if I read it correctly, I know in other events you're allowed to uh, expend timeout after timeout. I believe, if uh, I was reading correctly, that in the rule book for this major, you're only allowed to use uh, one timeout. Uh, Per round. Can you, but your opponent can call one in yeah. response. Okay. So this is uh, this is Copenhagen Flames maybe trying to take a bit of momentum away from Astralis' timeout. There you just finish your 30 seconds. All right, boys, let's get it. Now you get another 30 seconds to question whether that call was the right one or not. So both teams making some adjustments here. Really enjoy talking to the boys uh, of Copenhagen Flames because you can just see on their face when they're talking about the games and their results just how much. Oh, now that is interesting. So that's the perfect bin lineup for your uh, standard Monster Smoke. It looks like Roy's going to be donating that over to someone, perhaps even for the late Monster Smoke if he doesn't require it for his aggressive maneuvers. Yeah, they're playing heavy towards A again in terms of that aggression, Oops. right? So two players pushing up. Dupree's taking some early damage. Same for Yabby here, trying to get across on Monster and the Two-player monster hold really been brought into fashion by Gambit. A lot of teams adopting this. Means you can float an extra man over towards A. Which they have done. And uh, Copenhagen Flames look like they were really expecting an A early here. The bait here, right? So Hooksy is also able to combo in with Roy. He's the link man over to help Nikodos towards Long as well. But th their rotation over towards that B bomb site is going to be far away. Dupree doesn't know what's lying on the other side here. Oh, Hooksy could get caught in the timing here. It's all about Dupree's intuition as to when to strike. Elsewhere, Zipex has posted, I believe it's his third. Roy got his head on a swivel, and rightfully so. Glaive, passive in nature. I mean, Roy was great on his party, Claire. There's no... This would be something, though, this, wouldn't it? This would be something else. Oh, oh okay, and he actually gets it. I don't think Glaive could believe he came round the corner to looking do a at him. Take? Like, what? Well, all right, we're back in a 4v4. All right, Roy. 35 yep. seconds on the clock Look now. The this bomb. one's starting to heat up. And the rotation to B, they've hedged their bets towards the B bomb site right now. So I feel like Astralis will go A. Like, unless Lucky runs down connector now, it's it a, is going to be an A finish. It's a big ass fake. It's a big boy fake. Now they're already starting to float. Roy has got so much on his plate here. Oh, and that's Dupree gone. Huge amount of information. And they've got 15 seconds to try and break the site. It gets super awkward for Astralis now. And another chance for Roy. The supportive utils here. After the players and another one from Roy. Bomb loose. Surely Astralis can't shot. dig themselves out of this. Zip ah. with a double magic, another. And just in the nick of time, they turn it on its head again. Does he really going to have a look in for this, mate? I know what? it should have been your round. But are you going to give up the AWP here on the clutch? It looks like he wants to get stuck in. I mean, Zip just pulled two frags out of his bottom. Let's see if Nikodos can recover. He has been the shining light. Now, I can't believe they've gone for an Optimus he plan. He could have. He could have. He, he could have. this. Double long hold. He's already strikes for the first. He won't expect a second, will he? Time sensitive mission here. Doesn't catch a glimpse of him either. Now, just in a state of complete panic. Nah, Magisk seals the deal for Astralis. And what a conversion between the two of them. That was all five from Zipex and Magisk. And they came within the closing five seconds. I mean, they probably had 0.5 on getting that bomb down. Yeah, bodyguarding well right there. That's when the pressure moments are on, right? If you're going to play this late round Counter-Strike, you can't get flustered. You can't fluff your lines. You need to hit the shots. And well, Zip with some massive impact right there. So back and forth we go again. But you see who comes out on the receiving end of this one. A timeout again for Copenhagen Flames. And, well, at the high end here, we're talking 4.3 on the AWPA and on the low end, 
1.5 for Yabby here. So, in the hands of Nikitas, he get an M4, get some armor, a little bit of util. The rest can buy into pistols. We've already seen them give it a crack on the second round to play. He had the Famous, the rest all bought in, Whoa. and here it is again. So, Hooksy and the boys here. Okay, now I'm going to be intrigued to see as to how far these deagles go and how many we see. A lot of people starting to pull out the CZ, the 5.7. In fact, there you go. Nice prime example of the eclectic mix of uh, sidearms you can treat yourself to now. Valve is smiling nicely. Yeah. Doesn't get more diverse than the left side of your screen or even the right. Not too bad either. Mac 10, <laughs> Galil, keeping it interesting, keeping it diverse. This is the same setup they just ran, or at least very similar, right? Hooksy this time has taken the scout in lieu of the AWP towards long. Nikodos's barrel may be spotted, and actually, no. They've opted for the banana side, and so Nikodos just a straight head-to-head -head duel. There's no util coming. Barrel. barrel and an easy conversion. Oh. Both of them! <laughs> Nikodos has come alive here on land, and down goes the orb, but this one has collapsed for Astralis, and again, the flames are threatening, confirming Nikodos's third frag. He will be caught out in his green for that orb, but the round is surely his, tagged. Zipex, an AWP shot to the leg, leaves him limping and only 27 points of health. There sh it shouldn't be a matter of time. There it is. I say AWP, it was a scout. The upgrade, though, is just in front. Nice. And what a recovery that is from Copenhagen Flame. This is back and forth, and this is great. They continue to put out fights when the chips are down, right? Astralis, normally, if they put you in this position, they convert. Then you're going to have to go down to an eco. They can have a streak of rounds here. But Astralis are being forced into awkward situations. And again, you can see what that's done to their finances this time. We're just trading places. Uh, a timeout. Uh, we've had three rounds in a row now. We had one round where both teams took a timeout. Copenhagen Flames just took one in the following, and now Astralis in the next. So you can see they're under the pump because the money at this point is seesawing back and forth. So for Astralis, they can't have anything that resembles the type of buy that Flames just did. Right? They could maybe, just maybe go for pistols across the board with some light util and pull out one of those pocket strats as an execute that I'm talking about. That looks like the call. Glaive into a Tech 9, some util behind it. Dupree now with Kevlar, a flash. I think if they just were to search, right, a standard call that can happen on some of these four spy rounds when you have deagles is let's just do a default spread and search and see what comes our way. I think if they do something like that, especially with Tech Nines, they might just get run over here because these setups from Copenhagen Flames have been looking very tidy, very well thought out. I think Astralis need to throw something their way to unravel this CT setup, at least, you know, pacey. Because you can see in the way that Roy was clearing, especially in that round that Magisk and Zipex won where they probably shouldn't have, he's very aware of all these late lurks. Yeah, what a start to the uh, series. I can call it a series, even if it is best of one. Poor Nikodos individually, and Roy is the second name at the tip of my tongue. Saved now by Hooksy on the flank. Lucky's gone, and the rest of Astralis won't get anything done. Just Tech Nines and Armor, they wanted to battle for this economic control, but it's actually resulted in a Flame 6. Glaive, a scrap of HP. You'd love a plant, you'd obviously love a round. It's not looking all the likely, even if Ifamas has found its way into his grasp. Uh, this is where Copenhagen Flames can start to pull away, right? Keep this one clean. You, you've already got yourself off to a great start. One man going down, fine. But make sure there's no more casualties. Make sure Zip and Glaive are unable to get a plant here. Force them to concede. Have to take that eco. At that point, you're just looking at a scoreline of 7 to 5. Maybe the grasp of 10 is in their mitts. But good stuff here. And yeah, some individuals stepping up. Like, it's really good to see that they're not shying away from the moment. We all know today they're not in that uh, studio setup. This is comfort for Flames. And Yanko was talking about if somebody can catch fire, right? If, if one of these teams is able to get off to a hot start, they play their second best of one today. You could be sitting 2-0 or 0-2 by the end of today. Oof. Yeah, you're right. I mean, in terms of your the way you come into the first day of the Major has such huge ramifications. And I truly believe that Copenhagen Flames, if they've just been able to press pause on the land vibe they had at IEM Fall and just press play as they step into the first day here at the PGL Major, that's, that's brilliant. Like, that is exactly what it looks like right now. Like, Nikodos is doing exactly what he just did. Roy, you talked about his individual performances, right? I remember there was that crazy one where he was like 27, pulling them desperately into the, the final round of play. He's doing it again, 14 and 13 respectively. They are some of the only players in the server who have managed to break the double digits. Dupree pulling Astralis forward with 11 of his own. I'm curious to see now what Astralis want to do with Lucky, right? Because in a couple of these rifle rounds, due to the financial nature of this, they haven't heavily invested in getting him the AWP, right? That's not the core of the game plan so far. So keep our eyes on if there is a shift, if they prioritize getting him that AWP, 
right now it will just be that economical round and a full eco. So these are the scenarios we were talking about, right? With the T side, they're going to take things very, very slow. They're going to bait out all of that CT utility, force Copenhagen Flames to have to reinvest, or maybe just pop them from this uh, sandbag position. So I can grab one and look at all that damage. We don't get many of these anymore. The given rounds. <laughs> no, certainly. I mean, just looking at your health, like you're sitting there, <laughs> Glocks, no armor, 10 HP. You've got a full 70 seconds of pain ahead of you. You just have to sit there and talk it out. Now, this is one of the situations, right? It, it, it very rarely comes to fruition, but this is one of the situations where if they do take too long, and they're too far away from the site before they actually start pushing in to die. They have to die. They want to make sure they get the loss bonus. I know it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but uh, in that scenario, if you can turtle up there and, and, and force them to have to run all the way, they don't get any loss bonus, right? So let's see. Will they even get that opportunity here, Copenhagen Flames? Glaive's a wise boy. He's not going to let that <laughs> happen to his troops. Yeah, look, at this point, with 40 seconds left and heading back down, connected towards the B-bombs, I don't think all three of them are going to be scooped up pretty quickly here. Xiphon over towards Barrels. Ready and raring to go. Oh, oh. Sketchy, but they're so very yeah, ready. Go. And we will see the seventh for the Flames. In fact, doing it spotlessly, no threat out of Astralis on the Eco. Does mean that they'll probably have nurtured the bank nicely for the CTs to get back in underway. It looks like our Observer team as well, getting themselves back into the seats and getting everything sorted out. Camp parts yes, flying baby. around yes. the place. We're just putting it back together again. Yeah, these things happen. Yeah. Okay, well... Here we go. The rifles are back out and not enough money for the AWP here for Lucky. Even light on some nades for the likes of Dupree, Zip, and just the extinguished from Glaive. Tell a very big story that there is presence over towards A. It looks like a ruse here as it's a fake. They're heading towards B quite swiftly. Roy will know. He'll have that info on his next jiggle. He's pushed party aggressively. He will be able to confirm ahead of the smoke that there is nothing to be concerned about. And so the CT's already... Batten down the hatch is a three-man setup. Dupree is the first contact. They flash in, and he's got one. Magisk, however, pairs them up nicely. Yabby down in connector. Xiphon down on B. And Nade in response, but they're coming. They're coming for your sight. And Hooksy, in-game leader extraordinaire, has got a little too much on his plate. Caught with the pin pulled. That's Magisk again with impact for Astralis. Him and Zip pulling their fifth round out of the hat. And now we see the, the sixth secured in a similar fashion. Yeah, this one's done. Has to be the save call right now for Copenhagen Flames. But that right there, they have been noting that this A defense has been quite active. Or it's even been multiple players uh, more than you'd see, right? It, traditionally, two players over towards A. Sometimes in, in current Counter-Strike, teams will just play one early and stack 4B because of how susceptible that is to rushes. Here they've gone, they've extinguished that molly. As I mentioned, it gives the feel that there is pressure towards that A site and being able to pounce over towards that B-bomb site in time. But it has to be said, Magisk with some great shots right there. Chad? Yes? Have you ever done a graffiti? Ever done a graffiti? Done a graffiti. I'm not talking about your name in the game, because I have that on my Glock. But I'm talking like real life, maybe with permission. Oh, no. A little no, like I a... I was a goody two -shoes. Always? Always. Not, and have you ha held a can of spray paint in your hand? Uh, yes. Okay. Did you feel the power? Did you feel... No, I think I was painting some props for my mum, so oh, I, I didn't feel very powerful. Oh, it sounds nice, though. Yeah. What, was it a sword or something? No, I don't. We were doing some, you know, Arts doing and some crafts. steps or something, you oh, know. Some cut and sticks, something as we used to call it. Something to tap dance on, I believe. Oh, lovely. Well, the full five AKs are back in play, and this one, I mean, how lovely is this when you have not only the old Danish kings on the block, you've got the new kids uh, pushing them for, to their limits here in the opening game of the Mage. You've got two streams running simultaneously. Remind you, Spirit and FaZe are duking it out as well. You can catch that over on the secondary stream with James Bardolf and DDK. Yeah, so more of this A aggression, right? And this is one of the early tells. So sure, they have the info again, but the rotation right now to help out this B defense is miles away. It has to be on Xiphon. It has to be on the likes of Hooksy. Uh, and Yabby here. They need to be able to contribute on this B bomb site and lock them down. Oh, it's the perfect spot. Fully flashed. Yabby takes Good one trades. out of jail. Yeah, it's not too shabby. Xiphon, however, eliminated. They know it's only Hooksy on the site traditionally, and he's got a lot to do. Down goes Glaive. A big contribution now buying time for the rotate. They're coming in from short side. Astralis need to find his head now. Close 2v2. Managing the M4A1S is a bit too much to ask, but low. And the Deagle. That's a sidearm, a perfectly suited to the task. One to the center of mass could end it for oh, Zip, oh. and damn! Nikodos with the drive-by takes off his head. 
Uh, I love that. I love that. You're going up against Zipex, right? Who in clutch situations gets given all the respect in the world. He's able to play his own game. You can see what he's thinking there. This guy's stuck at short. He's going to give me the respect. I'm going to go towards the A bomb site. Yeah. This kid, not afraid of anything, does not want to allow Zipex to play with him, steps on out, headshot through the bloody box, and eight rounds now for Copenhagen Flames. They've won the half here. Brilliant stuff, yeah. And Nikodos, he's got, like, I want to say this, and I mean this in the best way possible, he's got the ego he needs yes. to play his role. Yes. He has. He believes in himself. Careful now. Glaive on an orb. <laughs> I guess Lucky doesn't have the ego he needs to play his role, because right now, he doesn't have the orb, what? but Dupree up through the connector. Oh, this is the oh, oh, Converts. Oh, my, oh my goodness. God. That would be a confidence. What's the opposite of a confidence booster? Uh, a confidence lo loser, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> that's the best I can do. Okay. Well, <laughs> four on five. Number advantage for Astralis here, but they have to convert this yeah, one. Yeah, no, it should be good in the hood now. I mean, admittedly, there's still a weapon disadvantage. And Yabby on that org is a threat if they do try to go anything funny monster late. Is Glaive going to give the orb to Lucky? What's going on here? Let them do their thing. And we'll do ours as soon as we have our visual back. I apologize if we do randomly stop talking. Sometimes just genuinely unable to see the game. Oh, that's a big find. A dink exchange, but Magisk making a strong case for the Tech Nine's return. Knocks the head off of a rifler there. And there's more to come. Hooksy actually re-aggressing, and he's punished Magisk for that. They're trying to continue to keep this pressure on, not let Astralis set up for the full commit. This is the final round of the half. And no halftime break. And no halftime so break. So don't go anywhere. Don't think you can just pop to the loo. Oh, You've got Yabby, this is a freebie. An aggressive flank, and he's pulled it off. First Hooksy, now Yabby, and Astralis kept guessing. 20 seconds now, what do they do? It has to be. Has to be. Glaive is making as much noise as he can, Toilets. Xyphon's dealt with this, and it is surely going to fall apart. We're into the site, a one-on-one, -on -one, a crucial one, and down. there it is. That should be the round. There's no time for this. Glaive will give it his best shot, some sort of double... 360 no scope through seven walls. I think we've got ourselves an answer as to the half. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you can see they're just how chill they are. They know they've won that one. Nine to six, the score reads here. And a great half from Copenhagen Flames. They've definitely played some aggressive Counter-Strike, right? They, they've been happy to take these fights. They've been setting the tone and the pace. They forced Astralis into a lot of awkward situations. And when Astralis were looking like they were getting on top of the youngsters, they came back with four spies. They had some pistols, they had one rifle, and they kept those rounds exciting. You can see here on your screens, Five out of the last six rounds. That is some great momentum for uh, that of Copenhagen Flames to be taking here into this second half. And when we get it straight back underway, there's no two-minute breather right here, right now. The action doesn't stop. Yeah, but this is the regress. You know, you you just seen Hooksy not only go to all the way to toilets to regress on the loss of the first, but then we also saw Yabby pushing into that underpass, just never letting Astralis breathe. And that has been a recurring theme, I'd say, of our first half. But we have swapped sides. Astralis on the defense. I'm intrigued to know how this pistol goes. The Copenhagen Flames will be within touching distance should they convert. Five sets of Kevlar here from Astralis, so nothing to work with. And, well, that's something to work with. Glaive, lovely shot into Zyphon. This will force the hand. It has to be the B. Yeah, and they're actually opting for short. They'll play retake. I say that as, yeah, lucky. Oh, actually, Zipex is now surely going to go down. They both lined up for the Glocks. It's an easy collection. There's no kit for the retake. B-site's open for business. Oh. And okay, Hooksy's knocked another for six. Nothing left other than Dupree and Glaive charging in from the monster now. They will have been heard. Some good shots, perhaps a little too much to ask. Glaive struggles, and that is a very convincing pistol. They lost the opening kill, and then everybody else survives. They get into the bomb site for free. They set up a fantastic looking post plant. They were even boosting towards heaven. They had everything sorted right there, Copenhagen Flames. The team right now must be feeling themselves because this is fantastic what they're doing here. And Astralis again, the screws are being turned. They're taking their third timeout. Their third time out here. And this is a massive chat for them to have. Right here, right now, do we force by or do we take a save, right? Uh, on the CT side, you never want to find yourself in that position. So I, I feel like it has to be the force by scenario here. Uh, and they are. They're starting to purchase on in. Five sevens coming through. Deagles, a couple of nades. They have to fight for this. But on the flip side, if Copenhagen Flames, if they're able to convert this one, if they're able to keep it very, very clean, I think that they're going to be running to 16 right now. Astralis are up against the ropes here. Well, I mean, let I want to perhaps pull on this thread now. We'll, let, we'll keep returning to it as it gets more and more frayed. But Astralis were very, very unhappy with their performance at the end of IEM4. Like, I mean, I remember them coming into the hotel. Everyone's down in the dumps. The tweets, like, from Dupree saying, I've never felt like I've played this bad in however long. I'm paraphrasing. But that was the... 
that was the initial reaction to their shortcomings. And the follow-up was, of course, bringing Glaive back into the roster, perhaps. Just a little bit of initial disarray. Good initial damage, actually, from the double HE. And that implies some aggressive CT positions. So we will see the time start to whittle away as Copenhagen Flames do their due diligence and will clear off. Astralis hoping that that will lead them to the B site with a gamble stack. Yeah, the gamble, I think that's the, where the conversation needs to begin here, right? Because Astralis is known for being very good on the gambles here. But Copenhagen Flames, it's not like they're being forced into anything. They're getting a, a lot of free real estate. Right now towards long, you can see here with this lovely cam that they can clear it out, see that nobody's home. And seeing nobody's home has actually drawn them back towards the B-bomb site, surprisingly enough. Those bathrooms, difficult against the pistols at the best of times. Lining up some nades, and looks like they're going to test the water here through Monster. I wonder if it's the full commit. So you see how far the bomb is in the pack. Will ja Yabby just have a look? Util dropped. Zipex burning. And sprayed down, perhaps. That might lure them in. That might pull them further into the site. Lots of opportunity. Dupree's Deagle rattling off a couple and brought very, very low. He won't be taking the next contact. Oh, maybe he will. Doesn't matter at 4 HP. All those bullets, all those bullet holes still puts a hole in the head of Zyphon. They're committed now. They have to go B. There's yeah. no time to go back. 25. Roy's bailed him out a little bit. A very nice off angle from Magic. He doesn't even know where he's getting shot from. Another contribution. It's only Lucky Scout, though. And I don't think he can contest the plant. The wall bang would be great. Doesn't quite find the mark. Very uncomfortable clutch now for Lucky. You want to give this a crack, but if you lose this right now as Lucky, you have nothing going into the next round to play. Astralis are going to have to take the eco. He's actually going to go for it. There should be no way the Flames let this one slip. Yabby clearly has been uh, outlined as the first contact on that diffuse sound. He's out of there. And that's the end of that. Okay, I think he just walked on in and grabbed a pistol. So now that he has a, a sidearm, he can drop that across uh, to somebody in the next round to play to make things as... Wow. Expensive as possible for Flames. Oh, that's the end of Yabby, maybe. Yeah, he should be going down to the bomb here. Yeah, that's going to be a death they didn't need to stomach, but uh, regardless, it is going to be another round here for Copenhagen Flames as they trickle on up to 11. But real problems here. You can see Dupree, he's actually purchased into a Deagle. I, I guess Lucky didn't find too much. It could be lying on the ground right here, right now. But the game's run away from them at this point. 11 to 6. Copenhagen Flames know that they're up against most likely players without head armor here. Two Deagles, a P250, and the Scout in play. Need something to get this one going, but straight in towards the B bomb sign, and they haven't stacked it this time round. It's almost free. Oh, great start. And yeah, free, probably the best word for it. Uh, like, at this point, I don't even know, like, you, you want to get exits if you're Astralis, right? But you've already lost the site here. You're coming from a place where one choke point is smoked off, the other continuously molotov Like, do you want to drop back, go through connector, maybe go around to t so, here if you can catch them somewhere else? <laughs> you know what we could, perhaps could return to as well, Chad? Do you remember we were talking about trying to beat Astralis at their own game? Yeah. Like, there's no gimmicks here. There's no funny business, no cheese. It genuinely feels like they are going blow for blow with Astralis, four-time major champions, Astralis. Yeah, and this is the thing, right? They've had to come in here and, and once again, excuse us, but it can only play their own game, right? You can study the tells of Astralis as the core, uh, as the but team. But zero, yeah. Yeah, with this exact roster, right? What are you meant to be able to decipher here? So, uh, Copenhagen Flames just looking well prepped. They've had a game plan that has clearly outplayed Astralis to this point. But if we're ever going to change that tune, this is where Astralis on the CT side need to start locking things down. And we've already seen some shaky aim from admittedly both sides of the server here, but this is where it heats up. Round 19, guns are out. Yeah, one person that hasn't had shaky aim is Dupree. So we'll see if his aggressions can be as rewarded as Roy's were. He's had a glance, he's considered it, and perhaps going to be flashed in again a little late. As the molly fades in playground, that's when Dupree at least has another cursory glance. Doesn't look to commit. Confirmed it's clear and the rejig of the CT space now. Now, there's a lot of utility left over here for Copenhagen Flames. They've been able to quietly take control of this sewer position here, using that smoke to their aid. Utility coming on out isn't going to force them anywhere. It's perfect for the Astralis stack nades that perhaps could have been wielded there. That's still three towards this B site. Two players quite passively for Astralis towards that top of A. And they're just walking on in. They just want fights. Yeah, well, I don't blame them. They can see they've got the two smokes in React. In fact, in fact dropping that out does indicate a Barrels player. 
Oh, and that's the fight they were waiting for. Magisk, they suspect that's another. They, they know where Zip is. They know he lives in the barrels. Lucky's under the screw and he's gone too. Nearly all on to Dupree. He could have gone down in that spray too if he's not careful. He's Needs stuck around. He's going for something aggressive. Hoopsie trying to be the hero. That's the bomb delivered and the flash is converted. Oh. Nikodos strings together two where it should only ever have been one. He's having a game. Having more than a game what here. That's a the bomb follow up, down. Chad. Zip's been in some clutch situations here, but this one looking very unlikely. Nade shy. There's no way Nikodos is going to get a little hungry for that one. Wants some info. Gets a bullet between the eyes. Any more for Zip. Loud about it. Playing the timings. Yabby to swing off contact or sound. There they are. Double P. Oh. Count down. <laughs> One, two, three. And 13 secured. That was fantastic from Zip to even get a kill there. But even better from Copenhagen Flames. The way that they dealt with that situation. And again, they're not afraid to take fights. Now, we don't have to go that far into uh, recent history to talk about what happens when you're too passive in a clutch situation. So here the initiative again coming out massively and this is a freebie the bomb gets spotted hooksy doing the classic in-game leader play taking the space getting that info that follow-up man that was round winning uh, this is great yabby even got that opening kill as they pushed up sandbag right so astralis back down to the pistols panic stations now this is not looking good whatsoever great that's for the looking flames good here. Yeah. I mean, he's pushed up, it's threatening, and that is too. Yabby's swallowed two deagle bullets. He's lived to tell the tale. Can Glaive cancel play? I think the thing is, with his position right now, sure, there is an opportunity to catch someone sleeping, and... <laughs> That's it. But he should be dead, like, right now. Oh, Roy hasn't pushed. Roy didn't go for the frag. He should now. He knows he's confirmed that Glaive hasn't retreated just yet, and he is just crawling it back. Xiphon will secure it, so... Initial threat neutralized, and let's check that clock. You've still got 60 seconds, so no sweat on the brow just yet. They've actually interestingly gone for this triple boost. Yeah, now, uh, look, this is the type of round that could unravel for the Flames. They have two players very, very low. Xiphon and Yabby, one bullet away from death. Now, it's going to come down to Roy and Hooksy, and speaking of Roy, there he is. Lucky's gone, number advantage, back in the favor of the Flames here. And it dismantles the boost, so the potency of that, completely gone. They have to acknowledge the potential that they can tuck into some tight corners and still be threatening in this round. Astralis, this half by Kevlar and Desert Eagles still definitely on trend. There's so many nades for this as well here. Copenhagen Flames can molly the site. They could smoke off towards bank, smoke towards CT. There's flashes to boot. The clock is sketching me out a little and it combine that with a Magisk opener. Great molly. Zip will have to take a fight here on Long and if he could just have found the third, Roy lives on. Still a threat is Magisk just distracted long enough to go down, Dupree's flank is wrapped up and call it 14, Chad. These boys have come in absolutely, and you're, uh, pardon the pun, on fire. Yeah, this is great. Like, this is really good. And look at Roy's at the top of the scoreboard. Nikodos coming in in second place with 19 kills, but everybody's had their moments. Hooksy with 16, Yabby with 13. Sure, Zyphon only has 10 kills, but everybody's had their moments here for Copenhagen Flames. Their game plan, right? Look, you've got players at the top of the scoreboard here, but the way that they've approached this has been fantastic. Nobody's put a, a, a foot out of line. Everybody here just making sure that they're playing these situations well. And the last time out called for Astralis. That's it, yeah. I mean, you're up against the ropes right now. You're battered. You're bloody. Your coach is just shaking his head. He doesn't even know what to say at this point. He's like, a good go. Go kill. Yeah, I, I, th that's the thing, right? It's the CT side here. So this is where the individuals need to start stepping up with multi-kills, right? One and done is not enough in these type of environments here, especially the way Copenhagen Flames are playing right now. Timeout is over. There'll be no more chiming in from Zonic here. And away we right. go. Well, as he furrows his brow and zips his lip, let's see if the Copenhagen Flames can really finish this off with style. You know, often teams newer to the scene, newer to this level of play, it can be hard when you're fate staring down the barrel of the upset win. You know, you're at 14, maybe even 15. And then as the reality check starts to arrive, you start second guessing yourself and your play. It can be difficult to close out, especially in the less experienced. Look at this aggression, though. Yabby should have this every day of the week. Yeah, but in the off angle. Okay, he's got time to adjust. Glaive has kind of fluffed his lines a little there, and a chance for Yabby to reposition. He knows he's... Spotted two. Got the info onto the monster aggression as well, and he's actually found him. What a fragger is Yabby. If he gets away with this, he's thrown out the smoke to retreat. Glaive confirms his presence, and they're going to go knocking on long. If Dupree goes down, this gets super awkward super fast. He has an AWP to support. Oh, he's not oh, even looking. Look, what's Lucky looking at? Caught in the open, absolutely pantsed. And now, well, they can re-aggress anywhere they fancy. The fact that Glaive has stuck around is a bit of an element of surprise.
Bogdan's Law. Yabby's got that AWP, and they're actually going back over towards the A bomb site here now. Glaive might hear a couple of those footsteps as they try and scamper away. It is going to be on Dupree. Oh, wow, that's Easy as you like. Brilliantly. They're all playing for info, but every time they play for info, they're getting owned. Into crosshairs. They are getting owned right now. I don't hear you say that often. <laughs> okay, Magis, can you bail Astralis out of trouble? Last time out, and already another frag. That was the one he needed. The multis you were asking for yet to be delivered here by the Astralis individuals. He's it is. heard him. He's heard him. They know exactly where he is. This has to be 15. And look at the plant. Planting bank side safe. There's no threat. The after plant can be played from T steps, or rather CT side. And yeah, Nikodos Easy will collect. Easy as you like. It doesn't get better than that. This is wild. Like, Astralis aren't in the server right now. I can see the names, but Copenhagen Flames are outplaying them across the board here. Across the board. This is not the way I expected this to go off. I, I, look, uh, I understand we're talking about, you know, the first game, best of ones, you know, all those bits and bobs that are going to be thrown around here as reasons why Copenhagen Flames have come on in here and won. But this is a 15-6 to 6 scoreline right now. Yeah. This is, it hasn't been close. Zero head-to-head -head as well. So many, you, You've got this, the map that Astralis are playing Flames on right now. They have a nine-map win streak on. Let's make it ten, shall we? Might, might have to. Uh, their debut game up against domestic rivals. I mean, it's juicy. It's so juicy. And for all of you Pick'em fans, I don't think I didn't see your tweets. I saw a lot of flames in that 0-3 box. I did. And they could very well flip that script right here, right now. And look at this, right? We Everybody knows. In the last round of a game, when you're sitting on 15, the other team, they tend to get desperate. They tend to take some risks. Well, Astralis have already been taking risks. So the safety net of the default from Copenhagen Flames is spread out. Here's a boost. Ooh. And there's the kill. So an opening this time for Astralis. That's a bit of change of tune. There's just so much searching from the CTs here. Like, it's like Astralis are never comfortable when they don't have any info and always looking on the other side of this. Glaive, so many players around him. Every, every side. Glaive is pinned. He is pinned on in. Mm, that should be luckies. And it is. So a two-man opening kill advantage. Astral is set for a seventh. It's up to Yabby to try and flip the script. You are talking about Glaive being hunted. Well, that's the solution. That's the resolution. They have to finish B here. 30 well, they're into B. Uh, yeah. He's this, only got an MP9. This is just falling apart. Absolutely dilapidated. Lucky doesn't finish his meal on neither of them. Yabby and Zyphon are bleeding, but that doesn't stop him. He strings together two, and that is surely it. Zip to clutch, they are low. Very vulnerable for the MP9. Oh, uh -huh. Yabby's having none of it.